The newest Raptor Lake Intel chips are extremely power thirsty and they generate a ton of heat. Managing all that heat can leave a lot of questions for you. And in this video, we're going to figure out what is actually needed to keep these processors cool and running at optimal performance. And welcome back to Gears and Tech. So as you heard in the intro video, we are looking at how to cool the latest generation Intel processors. Now this computer right behind me here was recently upgraded to the Intel 13700K i7 processor. Now this is a processing powerhouse and I needed all that power because this very computer is used to edit a lot of the videos that you guys see and my old setup was starting to struggle a fair amount to keep up with the footage in 4K and all of that. And I was noticing some very specific situations where it seemed like my computer was thermal throttling. Now, a lot of you have heard of thermal throttling and you may think you know what thermal throttling is, but I'm doing another video as well where we're talking about the difference between CPU throttling and thermal throttling because those are different. Now, in my case, I've already done tests on this computer. I have realized that this is almost definitely thermal throttling. And because I'm pretty confident that it's thermal throttling, I'm gonna do some benchmarks to just see what it performs at now. Then we'll change this cooler out for this guy right here. And then we will do the same benchmarks again to see if we can get some more performance out of this workstation. So we need to figure out, do I need a bigger cooler? And what's the impact on that? So we're gonna answer a lot of questions in this video, specifically around what you need for a cooler to keep your upgraded processor running the best possible and try to figure out, you know, kind of what the bare minimum is as well, because right now I think I'm running at the bare minimum. We're gonna answer a lot of questions. I actually don't even know the answers yet because I haven't even swapped this in, I haven't done those tests. We're gonna do it together. But before we jump into that, make sure that you've already checked out our other video on thermal throttling versus CPU throttling because it's important to understand the difference between the two. If your computer is simply CPU throttling, then what we do here in this video is not actually gonna help you with the performance of your computer. You need to make sure that the CPU throttling is not what's holding you back. If you've decided that it is thermal throttling and that's definitely what's holding you back, then this will definitely be the video for you. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. So the first thing that you're gonna be asking yourself is how did I decide if I'm thermal throttling or if I am CPU throttling? So I'm using a few different softwares. So the main software I'm gonna use is CPU ID hardware monitor. If you don't have it installed, you can just open up Google, type in CPU ID hardware monitor, and that'll take you to the website. You can install it, it's free and it does give you a lot of information that you wouldn't have otherwise. You don't wanna be guessing. The other thing that you're gonna do is I'm using the resource monitor here. Now the resource monitor, it's already installed on your computer. So all you're gonna to do to pull that up is press the Windows button and R, which will run a command, and then you're gonna type in what you see here, perfmon.exe space backslash res. When you type that in and hit okay, then you will get this pulled up here. And all this is gonna do is tell you a few key things. So it's gonna tell you what your CPU actual usage is. It will also tell you your CPU maximum frequency. Now in this case, you're gonna see that my maximum frequency is 143%. You may not see that. You will likely see 100%. The reason I see more is because my motherboard actually allows for a boost mode, which actually takes it higher than the base clock frequency and it shows in this case as a higher maximum frequency. But you can see we're using very little processor right now. So what I wanna do is tax the CPU, get some benchmarks and then change the cooler and then run the same benchmarks looking at the same stats right here. Okay, that's gonna tell me if we noticed a gain or 
if my cooling solution that I have currently is good enough. So when you're trying to figure out what's the minimum cooling specs that I need, we'll run it right now with the cooling and I'll show you quickly what that is after because I need to leave the case on so that I have consistent results from one to the other. So the software I'm gonna use, I have this benchmark software. I have a number of softwares. I have 3 Mark. I have a benchmark launcher from Blender and I have Corona. Now I prefer Corona because it is a no frills, no gimmicks CPU benchmark, but we'll run all three just for fun so we can get a comparison. Maybe one got better than the other. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up Corona. We're gonna run this. Now this is gonna hit my processor hard and I'll be able to see what happens here as it goes. So that I'm gonna be watching the CPU ID monitor over here and you can see right off the bat, my package is at 89 degrees. My power core is at 91 degrees maximum right now. And as the render goes, I'm gonna see that heat up more and more and more. So now I'm at 94 degrees. So as the heat builds up, you can see that my total processor core is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. And once we get to about 99 or 100 degrees there, we've now triggered a thermal throttling mode. So it is not finished doing its job, but my processor speed is being hindered a little bit here. So what this says is our benchmark says that we hit a 4.9 gigahertz clock speed, which this processor is supposed to do about 5.3 gigahertz. So I'm not hitting full speed. The render time was just over a minute, a minute and nine seconds. And I'm going to, actually, I'm just gonna take a picture of that so that I've got those results. So we need to keep in mind what the results were so that when we change the cooler, we can see if it got any better. The other one I'm gonna run is Blender. Let me see, let's pull this up over here. So this is the Blender benchmark. Now, this is not the typical one that you would see on like Linus Tech Tips where they are doing the BMW Blender. This one gives us the ability to choose if we want the CPU to be hit or the GPU. So in this case, it's gonna pull up our Blender version. So we want 3.4 and then I've got all files available, great. Now it's gonna list devices. So I have a choice, I can say, run my RTX 3070 and we'll use that for this benchmark or use my Intel Core i7-13700K. Now, because we're testing thermal throttling of our processor, this is the one that we're gonna run. Before I hit start benchmark, I actually wanna go back to CPU ID and I want to clear the min max. So right now it says my max was 100 from the last test. I wanna see if I hit 100 on this test. So I'm gonna say to clear those numbers. Now it'll reset, I'll see my minimums and the new maximums will be set. I can hit start benchmark and now it's gonna go. So we're gonna let this run, it'll take a few minutes and then we'll check what those results are. The render is just barely running and right off the bat, I keep touching on 100 degrees on my power core and I, my maximum is solid locked at 100. So I am definitely just bumping that 100 degree mark. You can see here, I'm at 139% CPU usage, whereas with the last test, I went to 140 something percent. So I can also cheat a little bit here, pull up my task manager, pull up my CPU. Then right here, I can see I'm at 4.91 gigahertz. So I'm not fully utilizing this processor at 4.89. Now it's starting to throttle me down because I'm locked at a steady 100 degrees Celsius. So that's gonna trigger that thermal throttling. So you can see it is slowing this processor down because it's continuing to hold that heat as long as it is. So there now I'm at 4.83, 4.85. So now you saw it spike for a second as it switched between uh, tasks and now I'm at 4.6. And if we check our CPU ID, we're still locked at 100 degrees. We are steady holding 100. So it is very safe to say that with a 120 millimeter all-in-one water cooler, we are not effectively pulling the heat out of this processor. It is significantly holding our performance back right now. And there we go. So our results are complete. I can close this because I don't need that open anymore. You can see our temperature is gonna drop back down. So it it is efficient as, at cooling. You can see how quickly our temperature dropped right here. So it is able to pull the heat away once the heat stops being generated. So it's working very well. That solves concerns about the pump. It solves concerns about maybe low water level. If the water level was lower, the pump was low, I would not expect to see the temperature drop quite so fast. So definitely 
definitely we will need to do an upgraded cooling system. So really the next thing we need to do is power this computer down, swap out the water cooler, apply some new thermal paste, and then run these tests again. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Now this is not a tutorial on how to swap a water cooler. So I do actually have another video where we do talk about orientation of water coolers, the types of water coolers, and for best maximum efficiency, how you should mount it. You could check that video out if you're curious, but for this video, we're strictly talking about what do I need to keep these newest processors as cool as possible. Oh my, so I totally forgot. You guys haven't even seen what the cooler looks like yet. So we should do an unboxing at least, right? So let's get this thing open. The first thing you're gonna see, we've got some thermal compound ready to go, which is very inexpensive on Amazon. And we've got this, which is a deep cool 240 millimeter white all-in-one which also has ARGB fans, which is gonna be awesome. It'll help brighten up that case, but let's see what's inside this box. I haven't even seen what's in here yet. So slide this up out of the way. It's got this little tab on the top. There we go. And then this guy just slides right out of there. Whoa. Now it comes with a actually surprisingly large collection of light headers. I know you want to see what that looks like, but I'm going to show you that in a minute. If your motherboard doesn't come pre-installed with a control board, then it's got this guy here, which can pull power off of your power supply. And then there's little buttons here to control your lighting for your fan. So I think that's what that is. Maybe that's a fan controller, fan speed controller. I won't need that because my motherboard supports all of that. Also got a number of other cables and this guy here. This is handy to have actually. This has got to be a fan controller, does it? I think so. So my fans, it's got the deep cool fans. So it's got one wire here for your RGB and one for the fan cooling. So these are gonna be, these are gonna be really good to have. I'm excited about that. And then a lot of like splitters and stuff here. So we've got all of this. This is, this is good. It's got lots of wires, okay? So that you can make this work. We've got two fans here. So you've seen one, two fans. We've got our radiator here and our massive pump and thermal unit assembly. And I think this lights up. Does the graphics show? Yes, it does. So I'm really excited about that. So we'll have two wires coming off of here. One for the actual pump control and one for our lighting, which is excellent. And this one also has the ability to vent if it gets too hot and it has a refill port so that if you start to lose the water in here, you can refill it, but there's water in here as you can tell from the listening test there. So I'm gonna take that out. What else we got? We should have a back plate, which we do, which is excellent. And a ton, whoa, let's get this over here. There's a lot more here than what I was expecting. So we've got our back plate. We've got shims if required. We've got a ton of different screws and attachments. That'll be for attaching fans and stuff to everything, so we have everything that we should need. And these, is that adjustable? Yes. So the cool thing here is this actually is adjustable for the newest processors, which would go in the outside most configuration, or if you've got an older processor, you can snap those in and they will fit on a lot, like it's multi-covered for pretty much everything that you would ever imagine. My motherboard actually has slotted holes, so I can use the old coolers as well as new coolers. So it doesn't matter to me which configuration I use, it will support both. I'm gonna go to the outside configuration just because that's what I wanna do. What else have I got in here? That's that bag. And other than that, I've got this, which shows exactly how to mount it on your different processors. If it's if you're putting it on an AMD, you've got the shims for that. It shows you how to put your standoffs on your motherboard if required, how to mount your fans, and it even has a connection diagram if you're not sure how to connect it. I'll probably reference that at some point. And then this is most likely, oh, that's just if you've got a different processor. I'm really excited. So I'm gonna pull the old one out. I'm gonna get this one set up and throw it in. I'm not gonna show you guys that actual process. I'll just show you once it's done. 
So it's taken a little bit longer than I thought, but we have swapped the cooler now. So we have the 240 millimeter all in one installed. Now you will notice something slightly different about this install. And that is that I only have one fan on the radiator. The reason for that is actually simple and you're going to say it's stupid, but I actually only have one grill opening on the top of the computer case. So I only have space for one fan to actually blow through. I did look at modifying the case to include two grills, but I didn't find a solution that I liked and I wanted to just get this in. So it should be noted that even though we've gone to a bigger cooler, our efficiency is gonna be a little bit lower. So I still will gain some cooling effect from having the bigger radiator, but not as much as if I had the full airflow going through. I did use the other fan on the side here to have an exhaust port, so I am flowing air through, and I cheated a little bit because I had a case fan here before. I've now put that on the bottom as an intake fan. So I'm drawing cool air up off the bottom of the computer, having the air flow go this way over, and then it'll exhaust out the top or exhaust out there. So it should help keep the case temperatures lower and allow the CPU to run cooler. I've also got a lot of cool RGB now. So I've lit the whole case up with all of the case fans and lights and all that. So with the white in there, I think it looks a whole lot cooler than it did before. But you didn't come here for a cool computer. You came here to see if your 13700K will run better with a bigger fan or a bigger radiator. So we've got our benchmarks all up here again. So we've got our current temperature is 43 degrees. Our max temperature so far has been 68 degrees, but 43 is already lower than what our idle temperature was. So I've got high hopes, very high hopes. You'll also notice I've added one extra metric to watch here. This is our task manager. The way you get that is just right click on the taskbar, say task manager, and then it'll pull this up. I specifically want to look at the CPU and the current clock speed. So right now you can see we're bouncing around between 4.9, 4.6 gigahertz. So when we did the full test, we never went over five gigahertz, we're at 4.9. So what I wanna find out while I'm running this test, does my clock speed go higher? and what's the performance results of the test. So now what we wanna do is run our render test and see if we're hitting a higher temperature again. So we're gonna hit render and just let this run full speed. So right off the bat, you can hear my fans are going full bore. So I've got tons of, of airflow here, which is excellent news. And we'll keep an eye on their temperature. So currently our temperature is 94 degrees, that's good. Down here, our task manager still is reporting 4.92 gigahertz, which is a little bit concerning. We are at 144% CPU usage to 144% maximum frequency, which is great. But look at those temperatures, 95, 97, 97 max. So you remember before we were at 100, peaked, we were hitting 100, 100, 100. We are 14 passes in now, and we have not hit that 100 degrees at this point. So whatever the result is, and here is the result. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm gonna pull up the results from the previous one and compare it to this. Now I don't have them, so I took a picture so that I can look at it while I talk about it, but I'll get my editor to pull both up. And one thing you're gonna notice right off the bat, so our real CPU frequency is still reporting 4.9 gigahertz. However, that is maximum frequency. And we think we were thermal throttling before. If we were, then this render time is where you're gonna see that difference. So the render time before the upgrade was one minute and nine seconds. The render time after is 57 seconds. So we definitely are getting better results now. Now, because I have a little bit of headroom, so my max temperature was 98 degrees, this does allow me to open up some overclocking options. So the cooler is effectively keeping it at the right temperature, and now I have more room to bump that and push that a little bit more. But let's try our Blender test as well, because I assume Blender will look a little bit better. Plus, Blender is actually a bit longer of a test, so it'll sustain those temperatures longer. So before I start, I'm going to clear my min-max settings here so that I can see what we peak to. 
and then we'll go through this. We're gonna do 3.4, we're gonna do both. It's gonna list our devices. Again, we're gonna do an i7-13700K and we're gonna hit start benchmark. And again, we're watching the temperature. So we're doing this in the exact same way as we did last time. I hear my fans ramping up and immediately I hit 100 degrees for my max. But one thing I'm noticing is that I'm hitting 90, like it's dropping me a little bit. I'm hitting 100 and then I'm dropping. Hitting 100, then I'm dropping, 99. So. I still may be getting some thermal throttling at this stage. You can see my speed 4.84 gigahertz. So I'm not at the 4.9. So I am hitting that 100 degrees and it's pulling my processor back. So what I should assume because of this is that if I opened up my case and allowed full flow through that radiator, that I should be able to maintain my temperatures a lot better. Right now, I'm just on the edge of thermal throttling. Like I'm back to 4.9 gigahertz and I'm at 98 degrees, 99 degrees. So I'm just barely touching on that 100. So I'm running right on the very, very edge. We'll just let this benchmark finish. We'll look at the results. Again, I can hear those fans just ramping right up. I can feel a lot of heat getting blown through here. It's important to note that the orientation of the radiator is also different this time and that's to help maximize that heat transfer I have another video where we talk about optimizing your radiator placement for maximum heat transfer if you haven't seen that video you might want to check that out because that'll cover a lot of the best configurations for that all-in-one radiator to get you know the maximum efficiency especially when you're dealing with bigger processors like this that, that pull a lot of power so let's look at these results. Now this is measured, again, I'll get my editor to pull them both up. I've taken a picture of the prior results so I can compare. Samples per minute. In this case, a higher number is better, okay? So on the previous one, on the Monster, we were at 183.33 samples per minute. On here, we're at 190, so we have seen an increase there. Junk Shop, again, 93.89 versus 103.09, so again, an increase. And the classroom was 86.9, and now it's at 90.68. So overall, we have definitely seen an improvement in processing ability. What does that mean for the everyday use? It means that everything's gonna be better from my perspective. So when I'm using this as a editing rig, I will have access to more performance and I'll be able to extract all of the performance out of this processor. So let's jump back to the desk over there and we'll just kind of wrap this all up at this point. So now that you've seen this computer upgraded, you've seen what it looks like with the upgraded fan, what do you think? So before we were running the smaller all-in-one fan, which I think was a little bit old and tired, it's been around for about three years in this exact setup, the pump may have been running slow, so there might have been some efficiency problems with the all-in-one cooler itself. But now that we've got the bigger all-in-one cooler running and we're hitting that better performance mark, you can decide, do I risk having lower performance? I mean, keep in mind, these chips are designed to run at 95 degrees during the warranty period without any problems at all. Even though that's a high temperature, they're supposedly able to handle that. So it's not a big deal. We were only hitting about 95 degrees with the smaller cooler anyway. But now we're getting that little bit of extra performance with the bigger cooler. So is that worth it? I mean, you can get this cooler for about a hundred dollars. And you know, I like personally to have cooler chip. I think that heat wrecks things and I would prefer to keep it as cool as possible. I'm not going to go and stick the computer in a fridge to keep it cool, but you know, if you can keep it cool, it's nice to keep it cool. I hope that helps you as well. Post in the comments what you think about the results that we got. Have you got one of these new chips? How do you feel that yours is performing? And what kind of cooling are you running on your chip? Tell us all about it in the comments. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.